Sled Trails is sponsored by Shell Canada Products, Smith Optics, and HMK Snowmobiling. Welcome to Sled Trails. I'm Brad Ewing. Here we are in Kelowna, British Columbia with Banner Recreational Products. But before we go in, let's go see Alex and Revelstoke at Glacier House Resort. Hi, I'm uh, Alex Hermai and uh, I run Glacier House Resort and Great Canadian Snowmobile Tours here in Revelstoke, BC. And as you can see around us, we have a magnificent day in the mountains. Uh, it's probably about uh, five degrees, nice and sunny. Uh, you can see the mountains in the background. It's just a gorgeous day in mid-February. Um, and we get many days like this this time of the year. Today we're riding on Boulder Mountain, which is one of the more popular areas. Uh, other areas we ride here are like Frisbee Ridge and Mount Hall and uh, Mount Courchet, uh, the Acoclex. So there's many neat areas in the Revelstoke region. Here. We get, we get visitors here, a lot of visitors from, uh, from Canada, from Western Canada, Alberta, uh, Saskatchewan, staying at the Lodge, and uh, Washington State, uh, Oregon, Montana, uh, and a lot of people from Europe. We have an excellent group of guides that make sure that when people come in, we show them how to ride the mountains, we teach them little tricks, how to negotiate the steeper terrain and the hills, and, and uh, by the week's end, we usually we can get them to do some powder tricks and some small jumps and things like that. And For many people, it's mind-blowing. They've never been in terrain like this uh, before. Um, so it's a lot of fun. Be free. Ominous carousel. Nice music. All is well. It's like candy from a child. But it is physical and a lot of our guests when they come back, they love it to go into the, the swimming pool and uh, relax in the hot tub. We have a sauna as well at the resort. And then we have two great gals that are providing uh, massage services as well where people after riding can relax and, uh, and get a good massage and you know be fit as a fiddle the next day again. Um, the resort further has a great restaurant and, uh, and a great pub downstairs where people relax after riding and uh, you know, we, uh, that's, that's a great way to be entertained at night. From Wisconsin, Wisconsin and, uh, Milwaukee. Yeah, the way we go snowmobiling is uh, pretty flat land. Uh, yeah, we don't have any hills or mountains and <laughs> right now we don't have much snow. So I'm looking through a snowmobile magazine and I see this ad for Rebel Stoke, the, the best place in the world of snowmobile. And then uh, we figured, well, we haven't been there yet, so we'll give it a try and here we are. And I think this is the best place to snowmobile yet. Uh, une des grosses différences ici, c'est que on fait sa trail. Au Québec, on suit la trail, mais c'est tout un challenge de faire sa trail parce qu'on on risque pas de pogner un, un arbre ou une roche parce qu'il y a un fond de 10-12 pieds de neige. C'est sécurisant. C'est quand on est en haut, on voit des, des, des paysages fantastiques qu'on ne peut pas voir. Que, on voit ça, c'est cartes postales, là, mais il y a quelqu'un qui les a pris photo. Hein, mais là, je comprends. Il est en hélicoptère ou en motoneige. Je ne pensais jamais que je serais capable de monter les montagnes comme je l'ai fait. Je n'ai peut-être pas fait tout ce que les hommes font parce que je n'ai pas la même force. Mais euh, j'étais tellement curieuse d'aller voir les paysages. The Big Iron Shootout, that's always a big thing here. Uh, they've got uh, some, some extreme sliders out here with an excessive amount of horsepower and uh, a lot of, lot of guts in order to get to the top. Yeah, the, the accommodations were excellent. Uh, we had massages last night. We are getting pampered and um, the food and the people here, they're great. They're very welcoming and um, we're very satisfied. Yeah, we, um, we, we use Calgary and Kelowna as our gateways. Uh, we're shifting more and more towards Kelowna. Uh, WestJet has great flights in from uh, overseas into uh, Kelowna, and consequently it's only a two-hour transfer to Revelstoke. We, uh, it was a little rough, but we went fast. And, uh, to get back to the, the Turbo Hill, I think it's called, we uh, took quite a bit of time to get there. It was fun. And then uh, got into the back bowls, and it was fresh and untracked powder, and. We were the first uh, sleds in there, so we had a great day. It was just awesome. Sun shining and deep snow and, and uh, making first tracks. It was just something to dream of. 
Yeah, we're playing hooky and brought the whole family out. We got uh, four four kids and uh, five sleds, and and uh, the little kids were zooming around on their little one uh, twenties today. <laughs> yeah, it's a great family vacation. It's something that we can all do and have fun at. So, what are you gonna say, say to your friends when you get back home, Joe? Mm. Well, how's your week? Mm. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> More powder for me. Oh, oh. That's <laughs> Keep all the kids home, huh? Yeah. yeah. Uh, we pick people up there with our with our buses and bring them to Revelstoke. And uh, so a lot of people flying in from either Europe or the East are able to uh, fly in, get in, get into Glacier House Resort uh, in the early evening, get dinner, and get all set up for the next morning. Oh, this, this is very addictive. Like a lot of people that once they come to Revelstoke and snowmobile with us as Great Canadian and stay at Glacier House, uh, many of those guests will come back year after year, and and uh, because it's it's an experience that they cannot get anywhere else in the world. Welcome back to Sled Trails. Up next, we're featuring our extreme sled photographer, Kurt Broza. First, let's get our safety tip from the Canadian Avalanche Centre. Hi, I'm John Kelly with the Canadian Avalanche Centre in Revelstoke and I'm a public avalanche forecaster. We're going to be looking at uh, a couple of uh, key pieces of safety equipment. Uh, and one of the main pieces is an avalanche beacon. We're going to look at a couple of different models, a digital and analog beacon, and uh, have some uh, ideas of how they work. Digital beacons uh, tend to have a, a readout of uh, distance and direction that will sort of point you towards the, uh, uh, the, the buried beacon, and an analog beacon usually works by uh, beeps and sound. And people uh, have gotten comfortable with one or the other method over the years, and uh, there's, there's no really better or worse one, it's just whatever you end up being more comfortable with. The proper place to wear your beacon is strapped right on your body and the reason for this is in case you do get tumbled in an avalanche, the forces of the avalanche can be huge and it can rip uh, clothes off your body. Uh, you want to make sure that when you do come to rest your beacon is still attached. So mine you can see it's attached with two straps uh, and, and firmly, nice and snugly on my body. Of course, a uh, beacon is only one of the pieces of equipment you need. Uh, in order to be able to find someone who's buried under the snow, you're going to need uh, two other key pieces of equipment. This one's a probe. It's a quick snap together device. And then now I have an ability to probe underneath the snow so that when I get close to the beacon, I can find uh, somebody buried. And your shovel. Avalanche shovel. And these are the three pieces that you must have together to, to find anybody in an avalanche. Hi, I'm Curtis Broza from KBI. Kurt Broza Imagery, it's um, a photography, videography business. Mostly photography of people up on the mountain, up enjoying their holidays and having a good time, as well as um, ph photography for different clients, um, different clothing manufacturers, uh, video producers, etc. I'm originally from Smithers, BC. Uh, it's about four hours from Prince George, and uh, I've been in Revelstoke now for about six years. I came here originally as a motorcycle and snowmobile mechanic and um, I'd always taken a lot of photos and video while I was here and I obviously really enjoy riding them a lot more than I enjoy working on them. Well basically when everyone was telling me that my photos were really high quality and uh, you know, I realized that as I was taking photos of all my friends and stuff on the mountain that no one else was giving them photos of that that type and that quality and you know I found that there is a market for you know the average snowmobiler who is up riding that you know they don't want to pack all the gear they don't want to set up for the shot and I think everyone really enjoys having a good photo of themselves doing what they enjoy you know I, I had started obviously taking just many 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 photos just for friends and stuff and it was me paying for all of it and just doing it as a hobby uh, whereas now I think it's time to really concentrate on turning it into a business and I think that there is the population here and the visitors 
in town to to actually make it a profitable business. Definitely uh, the photography helps the, the video part of it because just shooting so many photos over the years as a hobby, it really gave me a good eye for framing and catching uh, different light and waiting for different lighting opportunities and whatnot. And, you know, I got a pretty good idea of what a good shot looks like and you know, I'm starting to really get a handle on what the different shutter speeds are going to do for you and how that's going to affect the output of the video itself. I think um, the average photographer, as you know, can take great shots, uh, but to come up in an area like this, um, it's definitely a, a double-edged sword. You need the skills as a photographer and videographer, plus you need the survival skills, the snowmobile riding skills, you know, bow staff and nunchuck skills. <laughs> Lens clean and stuff. <laughs> um, I work with a company out of Idaho Falls called Alticity, make uh, snowmobile videos, and I supply their sponsors such as Boondocker Nitrous and uh, 2B Clothing out of Sweden, and uh, HMK Boots with uh, photos of their gear and whatnot. I came up today with uh, Ken Forbes from Keystone Machine, who's got an amazing, unique carbon fiber snowmobile that uh, I'm covering and doing their promotional photography for. Well, I think um, with the whole development of Revelstoke and uh, the popularity of the place as a riding area and a ski destination and everything, I think it's a great time to be in photography and video, especially around here. You know, I have so much great action and great scenery around me. I don't have to travel for it. I can literally be on the mountain and shooting within half an hour from the house. I've taken a lot of photos and that it is a profitable business and that, you know, I'm just hoping to get a lot more exposure and you know, maybe uh, be able to travel a little more while taking pictures of everything. And you know, really I'd like to be just living a really enviable lifestyle and photographing all of it. You know, if you're, if you're good at something and you really enjoy it, just stick with it. And you know, I've worked at this for a long time to make it a career. I've had to do it as a hobby for a long time, but I've had to work many different jobs just to get to where I am the author of your own life and I think you should just go for it and can't be putting the blame on anyone else for what you're doing. Sledders are normally hard to shoot because you usually tell them to go one place and they go somewhere else. 